All right, friends and neighbors. Let's let's get to the nitty gritty right off the bat here. How about that? When a store is closed or a business is shut down, you can tell normally, right? They, you know, if, if it's closed for business, like at, in the evening, it'll the sign will say closed. There'll be no lights on in there. The door will be locked. There is no coming and going because the store is closed. If a business is shut down, usually the door is locked. You know, the windows and doors are boarded up, whatever. It's empty. You can look in there. You know, if you can see in through the window or whatever, you can see it's empty. There's nothing in there. No people, no activity, no sign of life, right? It's shut down. There is no business going on there. So that's what it means to be closed or to be shut down. Right? Can we agree on that? That if a store is closed, a business is closed, you can tell. You can drive by from the street and tell it's closed. And if you're not sure, you can walk up to the door. And there are telltale signs that the place is closed. There's a fellow that's been running around for about a decade now, probably longer, claiming that they shut down the Supreme Court. Claiming that they shut down the judicial system of the past tense United States. They disqualified it. They shut it down. This individual calls themselves Foucault and Russell Hayfin J. Foucault and Gould. Okay? says they shut down the Supreme Court. Courts are shut. Courts are closed, he says. All right? So don't even bother going in there. They're closed. Yet, if you drive by your local district court, which, you know, everybody has the capacity to, at some point, you know, during the week, probably drive by their local district court, and you will see that between the hours of what, nine and, and um, five o'clock, it's quite clearly open. There are people coming and going, bustling with activity. The courtrooms are full. Uh, you got sheriffs there, clerks, attorneys, all sorts of interesting activities going on there. Quite clearly, not closed quite clearly not shut down because remember at the beginning of this podcast we basically certified what it means to be closed and what it means to be shut down these courts are very quite very clearly obviously not shut down even though this guy russell j gould claims that they are does that make any sense to you now I know I'm going to get these people. They're going to be like, "What? Well, why you got to pick on this guy? Why you got to pick on Russell? Why you got to leave him? A, you know, why you got to bring him up? Put some respect on his name. Blah, blah, blah. Well, okay. You don't feel that way when Russell badmouths other people, such as myself. You don't feel bad when Russell slanders other people. When he says derogatory things about other people so I'm not saying anything derogatory about him what I'm saying I'm quite clearly pointing out one contradiction amongst many about this guy saying that he closed down the judicial system and it's quite clearly not closed down quite clearly but he claims it is (laughs) so why don't you cut me the same slack that you cut him? Isn't it rule one, rule equal? Or what's going on here? Or is he the exception to the rule where he can just make all kinds of contradictions? He can say the Supreme Court or the uh, justice system of the United States is closed when it quite clearly isn't, and you let him get away with it. You're fine with it. That's okay. We'll let that one pass. Seriously, folks, what's going on here? 
Hello, my name is Colin Jason Knight from Matthew Cole Glass. You can call me Jason. I am your host, and this is the only podcast of its kind on the internet for the Quantum Grammar Shoot, where I look at topics through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public by the late Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, who, by the way, was Russell's uh, teacher and basically master. You know, Russell was the apprentice, the subordinate, the student, and through my eyes and my perception of what happened and the way things went, while David was still with us, as opposed to when David left us, uh, Russell really came in and just hijacked the whole thing and changed a whole bunch of elements uh, to the construct, which, by the way, I have no part of, and I have no volition to ever contract with that guy or ever use anything that he claims to own. It's not my thing. My thing is correct grammar. I use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax grammar, and I can certify that. You can look at over 500 videos, probably getting close to 600 by now, on my channel for certification of my knowledge. And if that's not enough, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and I can certify to you in a video consult. I have no problem with that. I have no problem taking the Pepsi challenge with anyone. That's how confident I am in my grammar knowledge. So there's that. But whatever Russell J. Gould's using, it is not correct sentence structure because, number one, he doesn't use the 1 by 1.9 grammar flag. You may say, what are you talking about? I say, well, this is what I'm talking about. He modifies the flag. He puts a topper on it. He puts a, well, sometimes it's a ball on the top of the flag, and sometimes it is a spire or spear on the top of the flag. Now, if you remember those old videos where Russell and David are together doing their director's party, and they both talk about flag protocols, and they both talk about, well, if you walk into your local Secretary of State's office, you'll see the stars and the stripes with a spire on top of it. And we'll go in and we'll ask him, why are you at war with the people? Because that's what the spire means. Hopefully I did a passable imitation there, or, or a facsimile of how Russell J. Gould talks. Um, I know Joey John Lester can do it way better than me, uh, but hey, you know, some of us, you know, have talent to do some things, you know, to copy, to mimic, to ape, whatever you want to say it, to plagiarize, and others don't. And that's just not my strong suit. Uh, But, you know, we do our best. Anyways, by that logic, where Russell says, why do you have a spire on the top of your flag? Why are you at war with the people? You've modified the flag. And then David Wynn Miller says, well, you could put a can of Pepsi at the top of a flagpole and that negates the constitution of the flag. There you have it. The flag should be free and unfettered, the hoist being one, the fly being 1.9, with no modifications, no fringes, no banners, no toppers, no finales. Just the flag. That's it. And then I have some of Russell J. Gould's followers saying, well, the ball means open for contract. That just means, oh, so now now we're, now we're also modifying and changing flag protocol, Army Regs 840-10. Now we're, now we're going to change all that. Everything that Russell and David talked about prior to David's passing, now that's changed. Is that, that, that what we're doing here? Because, you know, change is modification. Modification is perjury. I don't know if you know that uh, RJG cult followers, but that, that's how it is. Now, you may ask me, you know, Jason, you know, you claim to be, you know, the balance of the honor and the grace, position of peace and neutrality, made into rule one, rule equal. Why are you coming down so hard and and behaving in this way towards these people? Well, I'll tell you why. Yes, I'm peaceful and neutral. Yes, I navigate to the best of my ability uh, with the balance of the honor and the grace and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Those are also the terms and conditions to contract with me. If you or anyone else is going to 
say my name, use my name, or a a facsimile of my name, or implications of said name, and you're going to slander me, you're going to try and damage my vessel, well, you have violated the terms and conditions of my construct. So that means the balance of the honor and the grace, you voided that. That's off the table. I no longer have to uh, abide by those terms and conditions because you have violated those terms and conditions. So you get what you get and you don't throw fit. How's that for a catchphrase? Next thing you know, you'll hear one of those people saying that catchphrase because they're fond of taking ideas of mine and claiming them as their own. It's it's pretty ridiculous. Like they did with that news show. I was doing, uh, uh, what was it? Um, the, for the Now Space News, I was doing a news show for many months as an experiment. Every Saturday at uh, 23, hours, I had a news show. And I would syntax the headlines. And I would explain the syntax and, you know, kind of make some jokes and some humor and stuff like that. Lo and behold, after doing that for a couple months, all of a sudden, the Nam de Guerre Syntax Learning Center came out and they had their own syntax news show where they did almost exactly the same thing. The only difference being they couldn't explain the syntax and the syntax was wrong. That's the difference. Point being, they used my idea. Just like when they revenued the Red Thumb Club as the quantum community, I had already started calling the quantum community the quantum community. I had made a video of it. I have a date for like three or four years ago where I gave closure to what the quantum community was. They also took that and I uh, used that name. So that's just a couple examples. So you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Let's see if they bring that catchphrase out into their repertoire. Unlike other people, you know, I don't get upset when uh, people do that because I know people are going to do what people are going to do. I can't force them not to take ideas and use them for their own and not give me any credit. I can't stop them. All right. But the cosmos, there's a such thing as cosmic karma. Rule one rule equal cosmic karma. And I bet those people are reaping it on a daily basis based upon the reports I get back of people who are involved or have been involved with the Syntax Learning Center and those people that run it. It's just such a chaotic scenario on a day-to-day basis. Stressful, you know, and every the only people that have any type of authority over there are the last people that spoke to Russell or I guess in this case, the last people who spoke to Rachel who had spoken to Russell. And that's where the authority comes from. Hell, I remember an email blast that went out a year or two ago (laughs) where I guess Russell was throwing a fit about something and they sent out an email notice saying that they were no longer allowed to use the name quantum community anymore. They couldn't use the word quantum in any of their stuff because I guess Russell was upset about something. I don't know. But it's really, really funny and interesting the way things work over there how chaotic and just unsettling unhinged what are what are some other descriptive terms i could use geez i don't know a sense of fear uncertainty i even heard that uh, that uh Gordon Michael Schiller fellow who has been like a mainstay who I guess created the Red Thumb Club he's been totally kicked out I guess I don't know it's just scuttlebutt that I hear nobody really knows what's going on also because they're very secretive over there it's very very secretive and they they like to cultivate that they like to cultivate secrets or to use a a more fancy, more um, appealing term, classified. They like to classify things. Well, guess what, uh, friends and neighbors? Everything has a classification. We, as human beings, just like to classify things. There's nothing special about that. So if you're going to withhold secrets from the general public, then you are violating rule one, rule equal. And that's a money-making scheme for the most part. If you're doing that, like, for me, I, I provide 
confidential workshops, all right? The value of those workshops <clears throat> is my now space and me being your guide to teach you correct sentence structure. I offer an alternative. If you don't want to do a workshop, if you don't want to put forth any value for my now space and you just want to do it by yourself, I have offered an option for you. You can teach yourself, literally teach yourself quantum grammar by studying the over 500 videos on my YouTube channel. There are no secrets or tricks or anything classified in the workshops that I do. All of my knowledge, my collective knowledge of this grammar is included on my YouTube channel. That is the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Because I know the majority of people out there, it, you know, who doesn't like free stuff? Like one guy was saying, oh, education should be free, right? So I guess people who teach to make a living, they don't need to be paid. So they should teach eight hours a day in addition, you know, for free. And then in addition to that, work a real job to earn money. And then I guess they're, they're you know, like David Wynn Miller, they're just not going to sleep. So they have to work eight hours to feed their family. Then they have to teach eight hours, which is a donation of time to educate. Because, you know, people say education should be free. And then just don't sleep. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So that's how I balance it out. And I'll bet that RJG does not offer anything remotely similar to what I offer. From my perception, what he offers is a personality. He has a personality. He has a name. Basically, though, um, there would be no Russell J. Gould if there hadn't been a David Wynn Miller. If there hadn't been a David Wynn Miller or a Russell J. Gould or a Mark Lower Case K. Kishon Christopher, there most certainly wouldn't have been a full colon Jason Ive and Matthew colon Glass. There's no doubt about that. I am very grateful for the opportunities that the cosmos gave me when I came into contact with each of those gentlemen. I use the word loosely. I would say that only one of those individuals is actually a gentleman in the classic sense of the term. However... Um, no, nah, I can't really be that harsh about it because any communication that I've had with Russell has never been malicious or cruel. Um, maybe at times a little bit abrasive, but never uh, ignorant or anything like that. So there's that. But I do know that I've had trusted sources that have been at video meetings or phone calls or seminars where he has said some nasty things about me. And so, I mean, I guess it's just a matter of one of those things where, yeah, this individual will talk, you know, ish about you when you're not there, but they will never say it to your face. It's kind of like that, I guess. Maybe. Who knows? People will ask me, are you open to working with him? No, I am absolutely not open to working with him. I was open to working with him back in 2019 and 2018. When I was in communication with him, I was actively seeking out uh, working with him. And those are the terms I used in the emails, which I will publish at some point because I have all of them on file. But I use the terms working with you. And he, in turn, would reply back to me and say, yes, I'm also looking forward to working with you. That's a rule one, rule we equal way of conveying a joint working situation as a team. That's a team. It's not working for you. It's working with you. Those are the terms I used. 
So those individuals who are saying that, oh, Jason was trying to get permission from Russell to Syntax, nah, that is bullshit. Never happened. I never did that because I don't need to ask permission for anyone to Syntax. That's just goofy. Authority comes from knowledge. If you author a document, you are the authority of that document. Because you know what the document is about, you authored it. You authorized it. You're the master of that vessel. That's, I think, what people like Stephen Temple and others and, and Leonardo Edwards don't get about why they failed in, in the foreign vessel and dry dock, why they failed in court. And my guess, and this is a very highly educated guess, is that they did not author those documents. They weren't authorities of the documents. Leonardo, you know, David Whit Miller wrote up a document contract, Postal Vessel Court venue for Leonardo Edwards. And uh, Leonardo didn't write it. And Leonardo at the time had no idea what the hell the document even said. That's why it failed, because Leonardo was not an authority. Same thing with this Stephen Temple guy. Stephen Temple's like, oh, David Wood Miller wrote by Quo Arento. Big whoop. Doesn't matter. If David Wood Miller isn't there to explain the document to the court, it's not going to work. Because Stephen Temple does not know the grammar, does not know what the document says, did not author the document, therefore cannot possibly authorize the document, has no authority. Bottom line, has no authority. In order to have authority, you have to author a document. You have to author, be the author of the venue. A lot of people don't get that. They think it's fine just to copy and paste the template or have someone else write the document for them or have someone else syntax something for them and then somehow magically they're going to succeed. It, I don't know if it worked that way back in the 80s and 90s. It may have. I have no idea. I've ever, never seen any evidence of it. But it may have. But I can tell you for a fact, it definitely does not work now. Definitely does not work now. You have to learn the grammar yourself. And if you're going to go over and learn it from the Syntax Learning Center, if you believe in luck, then you're going to need all the luck you can get. Because there's something rotten in Denmark. And by that, I mean they do not use correct grammar. They don't use it. You can look at this, uh, you know, whatever that group is. I think they're based out of the Syntax Learning Center. It's based out of Alberta, Canada. You just look at their Canadian constitution. Matter of fact, I might do that sometime. I might do an audit of that. There are literally dozens of mistakes on every single page. Try and read some of those sentences backwards, ladies and gentlemen, and mathematically certify the grammar. You can't do it. It's not possible by the rules of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Just not possible. So what do you do? Well, you can learn the grammar yourself. How do you do that? I've already outlined the options. I'll repeat them just for ad nauseum sick. You can study the over 500 videos on my YouTube channel. Videos which I poured thousands of hours of blood, sweat, and tears into to create the videos, edit the videos, publish the videos. Over five plus years of experience on YouTube with this content of quantum grammar. It's all there for you to study. What you put in is what you get out. This, friends and neighbors, is a fact. So if you pour your now space, i.e. your time and energy into studying the videos on YouTube and do it on a serious, focused basis, you will begin to see results. It may not be today. may not be tomorrow. may not be this month. But it will happen. 
if you consistently do it every single day for at least one hour a day, you will begin to see results. If you decide to do it for four hours a day, of course you're going to see faster results than if you just do one hour a day. That's just common sense. That's just logic. All right. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And if you choose to move forward and uh, apply for a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar workshop from me via my email address, and you decide to take classes, then you will exponentially increase the efficacy and the speed at which you learn this stuff. I mean, again, it's just logic. But there are many different options for you. Well, two main ones. But there are other options as well. And people ask me, how do I know how to vet, you know, how can I vet a correct sentence structure teacher? What, what do I do? Again, logic. Sit down with the tutor in a video consultation and ask them questions. Ask them questions and see how they answer the questions very simple again you can contact me at my email address jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and request a consultation 10 to 15 minutes all it costs is your now space there are no charges or fees for this consultation you can ask me whatever you want to the only prerequisite is you use your correct name your audio and video are working and you are interested in applying for a workshop That's it. You can ask me whatever you want. Do other teachers offer that same process? That same transparency? I don't know. Maybe they just put a product out and say, it is what it is. If you want it, buy it. If you don't, you don't. They don't offer any alternatives. I do. I offer my YouTube channel. The sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge. The same thing. I teach in the workshops is on the YouTube channel. The only difference is you have to figure out what order you want to watch the videos in. You have to figure out what to study next. If you take a workshop with me or if you decide to invest in the entire curriculum and keep doing workshops, I will then be your guide and I will assess your learning capacity and I will teach you as fast as you're motivated to learn. If I see that you're not understanding something, you're not comprehending or cognizing something, I will slow down and I will hammer home that point until you do understand it. Just like a teacher would. Because it's just you and I, one-on-one. That's why I don't do group classes. I have done group classes in the past, but I find that they're not very efficient in conveying the knowledge because if you get a group of 25, 30, 50 people, um, knowledge is finite. I can't look around the room And I can't assess whether the totality of the room understands what I'm saying. But with a one-on-one workshop, with a video workshop, I can look in your eyes and I can see by your expressions, your mannerisms, whether you're understanding what I'm saying or not. And and I can then uh, judge what's the next step for me as a tutor that's best for you. And I have five plus years of experience of doing it with hundreds of people all over the earth. Many different cultures, many different types of people. Uh, So I think I've developed a pretty good method and system. It's not for everybody, but it's pretty straightforward. And uh, again, if you decide to continue with the curriculum and go for for one workshop, two workshops, three workshops, however many you want to take, um, they do get progressively harder. And just like in martial arts, and it does get very, very difficult because it's not easy using this stuff in quote unquote real life. It's not. So I'm not going to candy coat anything, but I digress. Um, Thank you for listening to this. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was entertaining. Remember, this is a podcast mostly of opinion. Um... Just my viewpoints on some things as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar. And I use the word kuleana, meaning the way an individual treats me, 
the way they approach me is the way, is the energy that I give back to them. And sometimes if they come at me with a negative burst of energy, I will return that energy tenfold if I feel they are a threat to my vessel construct. I will eliminate the threat. Sometimes someone can come at me with negative energy and there's something about it that I sense. I will not return negative energy. I will return positive energy. And sometimes that results in a positive conclusion. Bottom line is I have over five plus years of experience with correct sentence structure and dealing with all types of different personalities you know, all over the earth and different parts of society. So I have a pretty good method. And before that, I was a manager in a very large private company and I had to oversee 25 to 30, a crew of 25 to 30 males, mostly males. And they came from all different parts of the world. They came from uh, Kazakhstan, they came from Cuba, Mexico, uh, Congo, uh, Puerto Rico, all different, China, came from China, yeah, I'm not kidding, all different nationalities, Iraq, Afghanistan, Moscow, and I didn't speak these people's languages, but I was able to communicate every morning to tell them what to do through a pantomime of, you know, gesticulations and also through a smattering of their own language mixed with English that they, you know, a little bit of English that they know. But I was able to communicate fairly decent and I was actually one of the better communicators on the property. Uh, so uh, what I'm, why I'm saying that is a continuance of the evidence as to uh, my confidence in my skills as a communicator. I can do it. And I'm confident at it. And add quantum grammar to that. And I feel like I've developed a pretty good method. So if you're serious about learning this grammar, I'm here for you. Just got to take the first step and contact me. I'm not going to spoon feed anybody. No, I'm not going to babysit anybody. I'm not going to baby anybody. I'm going to be blunt right up front from the get-go. Not going to sugarcoat anything. But I'm also, I'm not going to make, well, I can't really predict how you're going to feel about anything, but my volition is not to make people feel stupid. My volition is to create a knowledge cultivation atmosphere, an atmosphere of learning, an atmosphere that is fun, yet very serious. Because, I mean, it's just words, folks. Sticks and stones may break my bones, my bones, but words will never hurt me. The only way words hurt you is if you let them. All right. Thanks for listening. If I'm you'd out. like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, Thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.